Test a season, the most wonderful time of the year. Celebration with friends and family. It's time to pay tribute to this jolly month. So join us as we get into the Christmas spirit. You've heard of Elf on the Shelf, but this is Venom on the Shelf. Well, if aliens and talking trees and raccoons don't scream Christmas, I don't know what does! You ought to know better! Guardians of the Galaxy writer and director James Gunn had wanted to produce a Christmas TV special for years. The idea had actually come to him during the production of Guardians 2 as he had been a fan of the Star Wars holiday special. Is it too late to cancel James Gunn again? That was such a heartbreaking story. I know. As well as the animated Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer and the Grinch. This was the first piece of content that Marvel Studios were planning to create specifically for Disney+. Gunn called it one of his favorite stories ever, and he aimed to make it as crazy and fun as possible. He actually had the treatment written for years, but it wasn't until December 2020 when Marvel Studios head Kevin Feige announced that they were working on one after Gunn had consistently pestered him about it. Oh, I'm so excited. The screenplay was finished in April 2021, Gunn claiming that he'd only written it in just a few hours, and he wanted to focus more on the characters of Drax and Mantis, as he felt like their characters were pushed to the side in the previous installments, outside of their own respective films. The goal of the movie was to set up plot points in Guardians 3, in Marvel's ongoing quest to make you do a shit ton of homework to just watch a simple trilogy, or else you'll be completely lost. Or, if you're like me, you'll watch Guardians 3 without seeing this, find out that Mantis is cool sister, and figure, oh wait, they must have said that and I just forgot because there's too many movies to keep up! He loved it, guys. Filming actually took place at the same time as the latter part of production for Guardians 3 in February 2022 in Atlanta, Georgia, using the same sets. Gunn loved doing both at the same time and being able to switch from filming a movie to a TV special, as he loved the difference in tone. The Guardians of the Galaxy holiday special was released on November the 25th, 2022, 2022 on Disney Plus to end Phase 4, and was the number one most streamed for the first week before dropping down to second. Fans seemed to enjoy it for what it was, a fun little taste of the Marvel charm to keep people entertained until the next movie, uh, well, maybe the one after that, uh, okay, well, yeah, there we go, there we go. Alright, alright, I'm sorry. Chill out. The setup to the special is pretty generic, it's just another guy who hates Christmas. I HATE CHRISTMAS! See? It turns out Quill had a traumatic one as a child, and it is pretty cool to have Yondu back. I mean, the budget clearly didn't go to the animation. Look at it! So the Guardians decide to cheer him up and bring that human Christmas thing to him. So they quickly head to Earth, kidnap his favourite actor Kevin Bacon, hold him hostage against his will, bring him to space to give to Quill as a Christmas present. Merry Christmas! What about when you fought and defeated the super strong masked killer Jason Voorhees in the woods? No, he didn't. He fought Pamela Voorhees. Oh well, I can't lie, the plot is so ridiculous, I love it. <laughs> no. No, 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 don't bring that shit back, guys. Look, you've learned from this. <laughs> no, 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 you stop this right now. <laughs> no! No, he's back! <laughs> no, be funny again. Please, Drax, be funny again. You think you can toss me over the gate if you... <laughs> Okay, well that was- I left my little funny man back in the house. What? I want to go back and get him. But Kevin Bacon is going to get away. But you still have your swirly red and white curly man. How can you possibly think this is a man? Really? You can't just kill people. Well, how am I supposed to know the rules if no one tells me? Is it true? He's funny! They learned their lesson! They did it two times in a row! Funny Drax is back! He even beats the shit out of her. Transformers cosplayer? And Rocket gets his moments too. Dude, calm down. I'm not gonna hurt you. That's a talking raccoon. I'll kill you! Don't ever hey! call me! And Kevin Bacon is also hilarious in this. There's a song where the space people are trying to summarize who Santa is and what Christmas is all about, and I can't lie. This song is fucking nuts! Santa is a furry freak with epic superpowers. He flies to every human home in under 14 hours. It's just amazing and hilarious. Mrs. Claus, she works the pole, plans her man's demise. No! Soon the elves will all rise up and stab out Santa's eyes. Oh, no. 
don't quite get the point of the subplot of Mantis now being Quill's sister though. I mean, I guess it means he has some family to live for now, but it doesn't really go anywhere or add anything. They end up going their separate ways in the next film anyway. It's also a damn good thing this galaxy doesn't need guarding right now. Quill needs a Christmas present. Quick, warp speed! Although it is pretty funny as Mantis attacks a Cap cosplayer. Are they even aware that Cap is dead? Were they around? Did they even see? Oh, who cares? They do have a funny moment where Drax is hit on by a bunch of gay guys and then Mantis gets drunk. But apparently it's this easy to find the celebrity's home address. They just get a flyer to his house. And Mantis actually uses a power to rob a lady. What the fuck? I want this funny man. Don't just take stuff. I don't even know if the lack of self-awareness was intentional here or not, but that kind of makes the writing brilliant. It's just hilarious to see Kevin goddamn Bacon being chased around his house by weird alien space people with happy Christmas music playing. It's disturbing yet hilarious. They even managed to somehow have an emotional moment about Drax leaving behind an inflatable elf. How the hell? But how are the bullets not affecting him? I mean, Drax is still a normal guy, right? He has like no powers. There is quite a nice and charming scene as they decorate the place for Christmas, but my God, Chris Pratt's acting is awful. Oh, I am so shocked, I guess. I am truly blown away by this magical and whimsy moment. But tell me this scene doesn't look like a horror movie if you just simply change the music. Guys, I'm about to pass out. There's uh, no air in here. We got you Kevin Bacon as a present? You got me a human being as a present? Well, Sarah Michelle Gell has been on my list for years and I'm still waiting. But I must admit, his reaction to Kevin Bacon is hilarious. This isn't a Christmas gift. This, this is... This is human trafficking! Yes. The thing is, for a dumb comedy about kidnapping Kevin Bacon, it somehow turns sweet as he realises just how much his movies have actually impacted Quill. It's so wholesome! How have they done this? He also seems to adapt pretty damn quickly to being abducted by aliens, doesn't he? It's almost like he's restricted by a TV runtime. But Nebula buys Rocket Bucky's arm for Christmas, which is also quite sweet. The film is charming in the most bizarre way possible. And it ends up with Bacon performing a song, which does wrap it up quite well. He is... my father too. Wait, so does that make you my sister? Well, yes. Dumbass. It's fun for what it is, just a silly little comedic Christmas adventure. It's worth checking out if you're a Marvel or Guardians fan, but even if you're not and just want to have a few laughs, it's still right up your alley. And we're done! Yay! Well, there'll be a video tomorrow. There'll be a video tomorrow. And then the end of the year. Yeah, you're going to want to miss that one.